Show time again. Welcome to the show where we talk tech, and uh, usually there are two of us, but today, as you can see, I am on my own. Luke's not even here to enjoy the brand new now not only including his Twitter handle lower third, but also alignment on the logo fix lower third. I'll just have to appreciate that all by myself. So it's been quite the eventful week, both here at Linus Media Group and, you know, outside of Linus Media Group. Uh, we were making some pretty significant progress on our upcoming headquarters. We had a lot of people tell us that, hey, yeah, the sound on that uh, chair racing channel super fun video was not super fantastic. And oh, shoot, I just realized my title is wrong. This should be the WAN Show um, Weekly Tech and Gaming Talk Fridays at 16.30. Boom, that is updated. So a lot of people said the, the sound was not, not very exceptional, but we have actually made significant progress on that since then, and uh, it's been expensive but uh yeah it's been it's been expensive but uh we're we're still you know we're trucking on and we're really really excited about uh about what there is to a bunch of people are apparently complaining about the lower third too bad we are sticking with the lower third exactly the way it is you want to know why because i like it and it's linus media group where if I want it changed, I have to pay someone to do it, and that's expensive. So that is exactly why we are leaving that. Um, I've got a... Uh, oh, great! I've got our topics for the day. So tons of stuff. It was hard to pick out what is coolest this week, but I think Valve Steam Machines finally coming. Also, what appears to be the mostly, we hope, final version of the Steam controller. Uh, details being out there is pretty darn exciting. Uh, oh, actually, I didn't talk about this when I did my show announcement uh, a minute ago to upload to YouTube, but uh, Valve also has that VR headset that they've collaborated with HTC on. That looks really exciting. They've got a new technology called Lighthouse that we'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, also this week at GDC, NVIDIA launched the Shield again. This time it's a completely different device, and that old one has been renamed, and you'd think they could just come up with another word. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk about the Shield TV console thing. Um, the Titan X, NVIDIA's new flagship graphics card. Details are kind of all over the place now, and uh, oh, apparently Luke is ready to call in, so maybe what I'll do is I'll tease one more topic. That's uh, AMD's FreeSync is being officially launched. Very exciting to people like me who super duper believe in this whole variable refresh rate thing. Um, and then I'll go ahead, I'll roll the intro, and I'll get Luke kind of coming on the show here. Welcome to the WAD Show. Okay, I think I have my uh, I think I have my call in settings right, but I'm gonna hopefully no no I'm, he's not muted. Hey, are you there? Hello. I don't have a video feed for you. Um. Wah. <laughs> All right, well, let me do the, hold on, let me do the sponsors for a minute. I see you now, I see you now. Hold on, let me do okay. the sponsors. Okay, so our sponsors today are lynda.com. Let's try to be completely appropriate about lynda.com this week, okay, for the first time ever. Also, Loot Crate, save 10% with offer code Linus. And finally, PAX East, powered by HyperX. Wouldn't have happened without HyperX, wouldn't have happened without this freaking guy that I'm gonna go ahead and find a way to no they can't see you yet that's a great dance Aww. and I'm I'm appreciating it hold on I gotta yeah. turn I gotta turn you down as well you're probably blowing everyone's ears out because of for whatever awesome. reason it's by default very big <laughs> all right add screen region and this is so weird because you are like you are not you are not a show guest you are you actually no. you live on this show. And yeah. so having you call in as a guest is actually 
like tripping me out pretty <laughs> hardcore right now. All right, let me just. I feel like I should introduce myself. I know it's bizarre. So today we've got uh, Luke Lafreniere. He's from a publication called Lines Tech Tips. You may or may not have heard of it. <laughs> I don't yeah. know why he hangs out with those guys. He should really find some like cooler kids to hang out with. Hold on, I'm trying to I'm trying to get you all like aligned nicely with the bottom thing here. So you get your usual. Actually, you got a little more than half the screen, but I think it kind of works because I'm smaller than you. All right. <laughs> so you missed the uh, you missed the the intro Malaysian part, but that's okay. Yep. We have a new lower third. I don't know if you noticed that. I I I'm still like. I told you I'm ready, but I'm super not. So, like, I'm still opening everything. I haven't even seen the actual Twitch stream yet. Um, but I, I heard that we had a new lower third. I just haven't seen it. Apparently, you're still too loud. I'm going to turn you down some more. Is that is that better, guys? Try again. Hello, testing one, two, three, four. Oh, for crying out loud. Okay, how's that? Try again. I'm talking about things that happened at PAX, although I'm not sure if that's what I'm talking about because apparently tons of other things happened. Yep, should be good. All right, so uh, <laughs> I've got someone complaining about the one pixel line. I have you misaligned by one pixel at the top, and I'm going to leave it because that's oh, how I roll. Oh, awesome. Um, okay, so why don't we, uh, do you want to just give me sort of a rough, what's the vibe? What's the vibe at PAX? How's it going? Um, a lot of the vibe is that everyone actually kind of wanted to be at GDC. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, so w back when I was like, hey, hey, we should maybe check this out, and then decided that it wasn't that important, that was apparently the wrong the wrong uh, idea, because like, everything happened at GDC. GDC was bananas this year. Like, yes, and crazy. usually it's not really. Usually it's super developer-heavy and all that kind yep. of stuff, but like tons of hardware stuff went down. Go GDC. figure. Like that yeah. that's crazy to me. I mean, what what, uh, what when has a graphics card ever launched at GDC? Yeah. Never. Yeah. And Never. like okay, I had no idea cuz I was traveling that day. So today I'm walking around the floor and like I've heard rumors about it, but I have I didn't know it actually launched. So uh, multiple people are coming up to me like, "Oh, like what do you think about it? Like uh, are you have you secretly tested it yet?" And I'm sitting there being like I have no idea what's happening. I had no idea it was announced or launched. I'm, I'm thinking that people are just going off of rumors. So I'm telling everyone no, and everyone thinks I'm lying. That's Everyone's awesome. like, oh, no, you're under NDA or whatever. You've been testing this forever. And I'm like, no, I actually have no idea. I literally know less about this than you do. So I will tell you that uh, I know I know why everyone thinks we're lying. Tech Gauge has like pictures of their card up already. Oh my goodness! Here, I'll I'll screen I'll screen share. Uh, Tech Gauge up close look at GeForce GTX Titan X. Uh, hold on, let me just make sure. Yep, my my screen share is working. I uninstalled that Creative Control Panel, and it seems to be fine now. Oh, nice! So there it is. Wow, it comes surprising. comes in a box. Uh, looks like a graphics card. Um, looks like it's using the same cool. They're just gonna keep making more and more yep. of the card black. Until yep. until it's completely like that. next comes the IO shield I guess that'll be the Titan uh, X Black Edition. Yeah, it, it'll be completely black, and then they're going to release the White Edition or something. Yeah, yeah, or 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 or, or, or something, uh, and or they'll just something. keep they'll keep adding more black and like more green LEDs mm -hmm. until we're yeah. suitably impressed. Um, so much. yeah, the the card has posed on camera. Um, I got a I got a message. I got an email uh, right before the show. Where I asked, "Is ours in the mail?" and I got a, I got a confirmation. So cool, cool. No briefing, no driver. Cards in the mail. Just, just no nothing. Yeah, I'm, don't. Oh wow, I, I see the lower third now. That yeah, looks really sharp. Don't ask us if we got time. You know, not none of that. Just yeah, put it in the mail. We'll, we'll deal with it. Yeah. We don't have time. Like legitimately, not at all. I know. That's not the best part of all of this. I think. That's I'll fantastic. I'll have a holiday while you're gone. As if that's going to be actually a holiday for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what, though? I I filmed four videos yesterday. Wow. Four. And I plan to do something similar on Monday. I'm going to be prepping a lot of stuff on, on the weekend. So I'm still going to I'm still going to do my best to, uh, to to get you guys. Actually, maybe we should take this opportunity to uh, to tell the audience uh, kind of what's what's going on with why we sure. need to uh, be filming four videos a day and stuff like that right now. So um, if you guys have heard of a video platform called Vessel, um, the first thing I need to say is don't sign up for it because we don't have a referral link yet. So wait for that. Yeah. So, so wait for that. <laughs> um, but basically the way Vessel works is it's going to have um, the same 
well, in theory, I'm, this is what they're trying to do. It's going to have the same yeah. creators as other online platforms like YouTube and even some, you know, more traditional celebrities, except it'll offer early access and it's a subscription based service. And then the idea is that for the create what's in it for the creators is that people watching on Vessel come in at a at, it's kind of like. I think the best analogy is the one that they gave us. And it's like, well, think about this. When you go watch a movie at the theater, to go watch with two people, it's like, you know, 30 bucks plus popcorn plus whatever. So that's, that's if you want to see it, like, at the earliest possible opportunity with the best possible experience, then it's a lot more expensive. And if you're willing to wait a lot longer, eventually you can see it on TV subsidized by ads. And that's that experience. So Vessel will be, it'll have things a little bit earlier but basically it's the same content and everything that we release is still going to go to YouTube as well. So And there there will still be uh if you just ignore Vessel there will actually be no noticeable change because we're always going to be uploading one video a day to YouTube. There will never be a gap. There will never be a difference there. So if you're just yeah. like nope, going to ignore it, there will be no change. So everything will be totally fine. All the burden is on us to get a full week ahead on content <laughs> yeah, uh, before yeah. we go ahead and launch with uh, with this platform. So we're still in talks with them. Nothing is signed, nothing is confirmed, but it looks like we are it looks like we are probably uh, we are probably we are probably interested. Um, People are saying no, don't do it. There's literally no change on the YouTube side. Yep. There will be no difference at all. You will get it's all good. You will get every video in your inbox every day. Yeah, and there will never be a gap. You will always be getting a video a day. Uh, WAN show will always be archived on YouTube, the the like day at, right after it's live, essentially. Yep. Um, all all show coverage will be uploaded right when it's supposed to. Yeah. There will yep. be no noticeable difference. So that's fine. People are acting like they have to subscribe to Vessel. You do not have to you subscribe don't to at Vessel all. at all. Um, if you choose to, then great. If you yep. don't, then then don't. That's fine too. So, yeah. got people asking, will the videos be the same? Uh, yes, they will be the. They will have the same content. It'll be about the same stuff. It will literally yep. be uploaded to YouTube after. So, I guess that is. Uh, that's pretty much it for that. Let's go ahead and move into our first topic, shall we? Do you have the doc open and everything? I do, but I've had zero minutes to look at this at all. Awesome. Okay, well, there's a, there's a quick one that I can that I can cover for you while you uh, while you go ahead and get caught up a little bit here. Sure. Let's go ahead and uh, post this in the Twitch chat. Okay. Bippity. Oh. Oh, it always signs me out. <laughs> I just want to post a message in the Twitch chat. I should be able to do that anonymously. Uh, I, I can still do that from here. Can you? Are you trying to do the politicians one? Yeah. All right, I got it. You got it? You posted it already? All uh, right, I so... I will in, like, a second. Basically, uh, now, to be clear, the oh, camera is not available. You, ha you have got to be kidding me. This is, this is driving me crazy. I thought I had this screen capture thing worked out now. <laughs> Where it was just it was just gonna work every time from now on from nope. now until the end of time, never. And it looks like I do not get to have that particular experience. We are back. I at least very much hope so. I'm really sorry about that, guys. When I refresh a video input device, um, if I do it with a Black Magic device, uh, usually the computer blue screens. So the fact that it only froze. The application that time is actually an improvement. Progress. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I, what I was actually trying to refresh was my screen so I could bring up this Ars Technica article. Here we go. Boom. Okay. Now, I think that um, I think that sort of it's a little bit sensationalist. Uh, Republicans' Internet Freedom Act would wipe out net neutrality. This is not something that the entire Republican Party is behind at all. I believe it's about 36, 30, 31. So not even a majority? So thir 30, 32, 32 Republicans behind this. It's, um, uh, it's Marshall. Is that percent or amount of people? People. Okay. 
Yeah. So I have no idea. <laughs> so basically, uh, Marsha Blackburn is filing the Internet Freedom uh, legislation she calls the Internet Freedom Act. To be clear, that does not mean this is being signed into law, uh, but it's basically throwing out pretty much everything the FCC is trying to do. Um, Ars goes ahead and brings up that in the latest election cycle, Blackburn received $25,000 from an AT&T political action committee, $20,000 from a Compa Comcast political action committee, $20,000 from a Cable Industry Association p political action committee, and $15,000 from a Verizon political action committee. Um, so that comes to a total of, off the top of my head, $80,000. 80, so I don't know what I should be more upset about at this point. Uh, well, I guess I'm not that upset. I'm Canadian, so this doesn't directly affect me, although it he's, will at some point. He's he's Canadian, so he's sorry that he's upset right now. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm upset. I don't know what's yeah. more upsetting. The fact that, um, it, that, that, that someone is just so obviously bought, I mean, fighting against net neutrality so, uh, as aggressively as this legislation would. It's basically like, yeah, you know, how, however will the internet survive if we don't let the internet service providers be in charge of it? Dear oh my goodness what's going to happen um <laughs> like it's 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 pretty bad um and so i again so i don't know if i'm more upset that that she's bought or if i'm more upset that it only costs eighty thousand yeah. dollars every you know, yeah four years or every election cycle to uh to, to be that completely in someone's pocket uh, i mean it's kind of gross that is sad so, yeah, so see, like, uh, seeing stuff like this, uh, before House of Cards, this is going to sound kind of weird, before House of Cards, I was always like, wow, like, that's so crazy that this stuff could happen, and, like, I know it's just a show, but now that I watch House of Cards, I'm like, hmm, every single one of them is bought by someone. <laughs> oh, I wonder sorry. who it is. I think I have you too loud again. Let me turn that down. There we go. All right. Hopefully everything is totally awesome this time, and I'm not going to accidentally refresh the Intensity Pro again. So we have more news on AMD FreeSync. Uh, do you want to go ahead and throw the yep. uh, the official okay. AMD page, I guess? Or something I along those do lines? The, I always do the line of sync. Yeah. Oh, sure. Okay, well, this was posted by Spartaman64, and the last one is from Victoria's Secret, but... Basically, in summary, there's not actually a whole lot of new news here. FreeSync works exactly the way we thought it did. Um, so variable refresh rate gaming. That's a good thing, by the way. It works anywhere from uh, 30 to 144 FPS. Why AMD uses cookies? That's nice. Don't care. Um, this page is not letting me scroll for some reason. I am not having a good day today. No. At all. Actually, no. the rest of the day has gone pretty well so far. There we go. There's your... Where, where'd that scroll bar go? Okay, page up, page down is my only choice. It's my only choice. You can do it. I believe in you, Linus. <laughs> Anywhere from 30 to 144 hertz, <laughs> it can refresh at, and you... Linus crying tips. You gotta have a AMD GPU that supports it, and a supported driver, and a... And a, uh, and a display port, a 1.2A display that supports the optional adaptive sync spec. So, in a nutshell, it's exactly what we thought. It's officially launching, um... So there you go. That's pretty much all I really have to say about that. Uh, this one's cool though. Valve has given us a date. This was posted by Victoria's Secret for the official Steam Machines launch. Uh, also yeah. Source 2 with Vulcan support is being announced. So Steam Machines uh, will include sort of the, the Remember, guys, Valve originally did like that Steam Machine concept thing where they shipped out Steam Machines yeah, to a bunch yeah. of lucky people. They're not doing their own Steam Machine. Steam Machine is just a computer from someone like iBuyPower or Alienware that comes with SteamOS installed or on it. stay tuned for a video on Zotax. Yeah. Oh, did you film that today? I did. Awesome. So that is that is filmed and will be uploaded probably in the first wave. And yeah, it's launching in November. It actually looks super good. I'm not going to get too into it so that people actually watch the video. But <laughs> awesome. It, it aesthetically looks really good. And they're bundling a lot of the Steam machines that come out around that time with the Steam controller. 
which was also announced in its final form at GDC as well. Yeah, so uh, let me see if I can... Actually, I'm going to see if I can find some pics of the uh, the final Steam controller, uh, GDC 20, 2015. I'll just try and find someone's article. So they've made a lot of changes since the original Steam controller. Actually, here, I'll finish up talking about Steam machines first. So to be clear, they're just PCs. They're just computers. They plug into your... your TV, or realistically, you could plug one into your monitor if you felt like it. Um, they range in price from around console price points to, you know, $4,000, $5,000, depending on how yep. balls to the wall you want to go with them. Because they're just a computer. Because they're just a computer. Um, it'll launch alongside both the Steam controller that Luke just mentioned and Steam Link, which is actually right. kind of the, 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 like, the, the actual piece, the biggest piece of news in my mind, to be perfectly what honest. Is Steam Link, see, you have been disconnected. Steam Link yeah. is really cool. It's going to be 50 bucks apparently, or I think, I don't know if they actually said 50 bucks. I think they said priced the same as the controller, which is 50 bucks. So, okay. so I don't know, maybe it ends up being 60 or like, who knows. Uh, but around it's, there. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be around that $50 price point. It supports yeah. 1080p 60 hertz streaming. And then basically, it's just a dedicated box for Steam and home streaming. So you can play games. 1080p 60. Yes. So better oh, than the Doko. I was just going to say, oh. Oh, <laughs> Doko. Do so Do it's cheaper. Yeah. It's cheaper than the Doku Doko thing, and it's better. Yeah. So Doko 2 or Doko Plus or whatever it is that they've got planned is now officially dead. Um, and it will. It won't just support game streaming. It'll also support streaming your your desktop from uh, from another location. So if you have, so I mean, we're all the parts of the ecosystem are coming together. The thing that yeah. was missing was a super cheapo Chromecast level Steam yeah. in home streaming thing. People have. I think people have played around with it on the Raspberry Pi. I don't think the experience was that great. I, I haven't seen anything about Pi Two. Uh, but yeah. this at 50 bucks with an Ethernet port in, a couple USB ports for controllers or mouse and keyboard or whatever else, and then HDMI looks like pretty much the bee's knees. That sounds and, awesome. Yeah, at 50 we, bucks, yeah, that's awesome. Have, yeah, that is exactly, yeah. Um, so, like, to me, that kills all but the highest end uh, TV attached devices that are designed to stream from computers and yeah. i'll talk i'll talk more about nvidia shield soon because that still right. kind of has a place and there's a discussion yep. to be had there but would you buy a steam machine at this point no uh i probably wasn't gonna buy a steam machine anyways because you... i want to make a right. mineral oil home theater pc but now i don't know how applicable that is because this steam link thing actually sounds awesome and like one really cool thing, I, I've been doing some amount of research on receivers lately, not a huge amount, but a little bit. Um, and the second that you get to anything that's going to be better than something that I could just buy from like a thrift store or a secondhand store because receivers haven't really gotten that much crazy better, um, as far as I can tell, is, is stuff like networking. Mm -hmm. So if I can just have one of these hooked up to my receiver and just Bluetooth to that, through my phone then i can just control the songs and stuff through there and just use power amp on my phone pull it off my nas because i now have a connected thing like i don't know that's awesome yeah i uh, like i am still one of those people who has a media center pc but even yeah. i am looking at some of these solutions and kind of going well shoot am i ever actually sitting in front of my computer upstairs while i sit on my couch um, yeah. there's still a place like people who want to run games at 4k on their 4k TV, uh, are yeah. not going to be served by a device like this, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to, I'm going to like, I'm going to say it. High contrast is way more important than 4k, a quality display from the yeah. kind of distance yeah. that I sit from my TV, a quality display is way more important than 4k. 4k has not tempted me to upgrade to it personally it's the kind of thing i love to drool over and like walking around at ces yeah. with like 4k curved this and 4k oled that and like 4k up your butt whatever all the 4k is like exciting and sweet and, and like i geek out over that stuff but i'm not gonna pay for yep. it yet yeah one thing i have to worry about with this is uh any input latency 
So I, ah, blah, blah, blah. I forget what they were. I forget what it is exactly. But if it's anything like Steam in home streaming, okay, if you're like competitive CSGO dude like you or Ed or whatever else, nah, man. But I'm I'm just saying I'm just saying like uh like yeah like you're right like obviously like playing Civ or whatever would be great on this uh Civ or XCOM anything that's like turn based or whatever will be fine but how many games will be an issue I I want to get my hands on it essentially and try like it it's it sounds really compelling but I'm not sure if it's going to replace home theater PCs for everyone is essentially what I'm trying to say yeah like if you do it for a lot of people like my dad would now be able to ditch the home theater PC that he has. Um, because it's giant, um, and then use this instead, because that would be great. Because if my dad's gonna play any games, it'll be like, uh, what is that game called? Rocksmith? I think it's Rocksmith. That oh, game okay. that you can play with an actual guitar. Okay. And it's kind of like Rock Band. Yeah, so he'll play like that or like a racing game. So he'll probably be fine with either one. Um, so he could just get the Steam Link, but it might not work for everybody. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm excited to see where it goes. I mean, it's, um, it, it, like you said, it's not for everyone. You want 4K, you want like the absolute best input yeah. latency, you want this, you want that. Okay, fine, well then you gotta pay. But for 50 bucks, for 1080p 60 with, you know, sort of sub, you know, 60 milliseconds of, of extra latency, it's, it's looking pretty compelling. And let's let's talk a little bit about the Steam controller. So this article is from uh, IGN. I'm just gonna pull up this this uh, this still of, of what we're looking at here. So now the original the original Steam controller just had the two haptic feedback pads, and Valve's concept was that they wanted you to uh, use that as your button inputs and as your D-pad slash joysticks analog stick, whatever you want to call it. They wanted all the control to be through the haptic pads. Now it still got that. And they are that sort of. I, we've seen a lot of different iterations with things like yeah. uh, the positions swapped around for a joystick versus yeah. a haptic pad, or buttons here, or buttons there. Um, so now this is it. It has the two haptic pads on the outside in what look like the more ergonomic positions, and then it has a single joystick on the left and an A B X Y layout of buttons that looks like it's ripped straight off an Xbox controller with yeah. a, with a Steam button in the middle. Uh, select and start or back and forward or whatever you want to call those and then four trigger buttons on the shoulders and then I believe there's two squeeze buttons on the bottom as well. Luke, what's your take on this? You've seen it, right? Uh, I, I've seen it, yeah. I have it up on stream right now actually because I'm trying to follow along on the stream because I, I don't really know what you're looking at. Uh, awesome. I don't know. I, I am probably still going to stick with my like 360 controller thing. Um, and I'll, I'll maintain what I said actually when they first started showing off Steam controller things, which is it might make sense for games that I normally wouldn't want to play with a controller. Yeah. So so most games that I want to play like an action game, if I want to play Assassin's Creed, a lot of times I'll play it with a controller. Um, I didn't play Shadow of Mordor with a controller, but I heard it was a pretty good experience. Mm -hmm. uh, stuff like racing games, I would always play with a controller. Yeah, third um, person's always pretty good with a controller. Um, yeah, like, I, I third, did... third person action fighting. I find usually does well with a controller. Like Tomb Raider um, like 2013, think... I hardly touched it. Yeah. Every time I try to benchmark that damn game and I have to play it with a keyboard and mouse, I'm like, oh crap, I don't know how to do anything. <laughs> and the I beat the game. I like about... Yeah, yeah. The only thing I don't like in that game is that there's there's uh, free aiming with like guns and bows, which I always have an issue with. Oh, with, with the, controller. the controller? You know what? Yeah. By the end of that game, I was getting not bad, actually. I believe you, I just suck. So I want to use a keyboard and mouse because I can be, I, I just. I'm the truth, sorry. the ugly, the ugly truth that no PC gamer wants to tell you. I guess I just have to use a keyboard and mouse because I suck with a controller. You except heard it here. Also, for, you heard it here first, it's folks. So faster. You heard it here first. That that reminds me of PC some of those, those PC video gamers clips. are just losers. Those video clips that I was doing today, actually, I did quite a few of those. I don't know if we're. No, we are not teasing okay. that. That is going to be freaking right. awesome. Is it going to be as awesome as I think? Um, the first couple, I think I was too tame, and I've I've been I've been uh, I've had to apologize to a few people now. Nice. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. Those are going to be awesome videos. Freaking awesome. Part of part of my problem right now is that uh, 
I'm trying not to leak this too much. No yeah. one is lashing back at all. Really? So it's just so it, really it's been, awkward. It's, yeah. Nice. Like I'll hammer into someone and they'll just be like, oh, okay. And it's like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, crap, okay, that's awkward. I don't know <laughs> I if don't that's know better or worse. Okay, okay, you guys, these videos are on the schedule for, I think the first one comes out Monday midnight. And then I think the second one comes out Tuesday midnight. So stay tuned because these are going to be <laughs> awesome videos of basically Luke going supreme troll on people. It's going yeah. to be it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Um, all right, let's uh, let's go ahead and move on. I guess. Oh, Source Two will be free to all content developers. Kind of a big deal. That's awesome. Probably shouldn't miss that. Um, so I guess I, I would like to to draw a bit of a conclusion about Steam Machine here before we move on though. Um, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to say dead in the water, um, about SteamOS. Really? Uh, yeah, Valve announced a lot of upcoming games that are going to be getting Linux support, which is super cool. Um, yeah. I, I don't understand the relevance. As a standalone product that exists in a vacuum, SteamOS and a Steam machine that runs SteamOS makes sense because it's like, okay, I don't have to pay for an OS. I just saved some money on my computer. Yep. But with the, uh, with the, uh, the Steam Link at 50 bucks, delivering in my mind 90% yeah. of the experience of what a dedicated Steam Boss can do, because remember, you're not buying a TV with 144 hertz refresh rate. There is no compelling reason to have higher than 60 FPS on your TV anyway we're talking about a little bit of extra latency most couch optimized games are not playing CSGO on the couch most yep. couch optimized games are going to be a more casual experience yep. anyway so like Assassin's Creed or, or a driving game or whatever that's right exactly so why do I need to have this utmost absolute best performance when I can just for 50 bucks link up to a PC somewhere else and then as if as, as like kind of the final nail in the coffin as if game compatibility for the ones that are you can actually run locally isn't bad enough and yes it's getting better but let's face it it's not that great um nvidia's news this week with the shield console is the what? answer to uh who needs uh, like is the answer for people who want to stream 4k uh well not okay not not shield console i didn't hear anything you haven't heard about the shield console no okay it doesn't okay to be clear to be clear it doesn't do it yet but Steam Machines aren't coming until, oh, uh, I think November. November, right? Yeah, Steam November, Machines aren't yeah. coming till November. Now, NVIDIA, look how quickly they've been iterating. So Shield Console is 200 bucks, and it doesn't stream games in 4K, but it'll do 1080p 60 games, if I, if I recall correctly. Hold on, I might be wrong. I, I, might, I might be wrong. Uh, capable of decoding 4K 60 FPS. So I can, actually, I can't think of a of a clear reason why it couldn't actually support 4K game stream at some point because it can decode 4K 60 FPS. So this will handle all your 4K Netflix, it'll handle any other 4K yeah. YouTube, it'll handle any other kind of 4K streaming service. And then again for games, I don't think that 4K gaming is there yet, personally. Right. Gaming yeah. at 4K, especially the latest AAA titles, is not a tremendous experience. So the additional network load, the additional processing load, the additional hardware that you have to buy for your computer, 4K, 4K streamed gaming is, is not happening yet. 4K gaming in general is not happening yet, even with Titan X. Um, so... You know, well, it, it's happening, just not to the degree that it should be. It's, it's not good enough that I'm ready to go for it. Personally, I would just run 1080p right. and make sure I never dip below 60, so I don't see those. So I don't see those dips yep. and stutters because it's that's, not like, that's, that's, yeah, it's not like you're getting free sync or G sync on your TV. So you're gonna see that stutter. It's gonna happen. And I yep. would rather yep. have the lower resolution than the hip hiccups and stutters. Um, yeah. So so I think that because this can handle the 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 4K media media experience and can also do 1080p 60 fps streaming i think that um, there are com more compelling options than a steam machine all over the place and even from valve themselves 
So, I mean, I might try out the controller just to give it a shot. I, we've yet to see, in my mind, we've yet to see a controller better than the Xbox 360. The Xbox One one is okay. Yeah. I don't like the DualShock shape. I get cramps in my hands eventually. Yeah. NVIDIA's controller is okay. It's not better than an Xbox 360 controller by any means. I like the integrated touchscreen. That's cool. So I really want to see if Valve managed to figure out yeah. The tactile feedback of the buttons, but there's a thing I already really don't like about the Valve controller or the Steam controller, and that is the positioning of the buttons and the the joystick, and also the fact that it outright doesn't have a D-pad. Um, you know, if you wanna yep. if you wanna play any emulated older console games or anything like that, well, go die in a fire because you're not doing it on that controller. That's nope. not happening. And that's something that I actually do. You know, I probably do more retro gaming on my TV than I do current gaming on my TV. So that's a big deal for me. I do most of my yeah, current gaming on yeah. my portable. Someone says, right. face it, Linus, you don't like any controllers. Absolutely not true. The Super Nintendo controller is exceptional. I have like 15-year-old yep. Super Nintendo control. Well, no, how old would they, they be older than that? Twenty. I have 20-year-old Super Nintendo controllers that still have great tactile response on the buttons and D-pad. Show me another controller that has held up that well to the test of time. I also really like the Xbox 360 controller, although the D-pad is garbage, as the Twitch chat is exploding with. So I have an SNES controller next to my, uh, that's actually plugged directly into my media PC, and then I have an Xbox 360 wireless controller that is wirelessly connected to it, and that takes care of all of my controller needs. Yeah. Um... So we'll get into the NVIDIA thing a little bit more lately. Or late, lately. Later. Later. Yeah, later. Uh, Mantle SDK will be available to everyone this month, so that's cool if you're into that. That was posted by Vanadiyad Gaming. Um, personally, even though game developer support has actually been way better than I ever expected for Mantle, um, yep. I still don't see this going anywhere. Um, DirectX 12 has, has to be... And, 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 I mean, it's Kronos Group has most of Mantle anyway. Uh, Microsoft has included aspects of Mantle in the upcoming Direct 3D 12, uh, or in, in the DirectX 12. Like, Mantle's going to have to differentiate itself in a pretty spectacular way, and AMD seems determined for it to not be very different from DirectX and OpenGL as we move forward. So, like, Mantle's cool, and I think it was, it lit a fire under the industry and created hype amongst users. It created user demand for these low level APIs that most users would never even have an inkling of an understanding as to why they were important. And AMD did a great thing for the industry there, but DirectX 12 is going to have to completely fall on its face for Mantle to be relevant at all moving yeah. forward. And they had DirectX 12 demos at GDC as well. It's looking. They had like side by side between 11 and 12, and that were actually pretty impressive. I did, I did know about that. It's looking pretty good. Um, oh wait, that one was posted by. Uh, oh, shoot, I hate scrolling in uh, in Google Sheets. Oh, I already said that. All right, I've got another one for. Oh wait, are you posting these in the chat? Yep. Okay, awesome. Uh, next one. This is a rumor. Google is reportedly preparing Android Wear for iPhone and iPad. This is big. So I'm going to go ahead. I'll uh, bring this up. So this is on Mac Rumors. This is not confirmed. This is a rumor, but there's a developer that's managed to sync notifications between iPhone and Android Wear. Um, method involves using a protocol used by Pebble Watch, blippity bloopity, etc., etc., etc. This would be huge because uh, with some of the rumors circulating about the Apple Watch and its battery life, although there's a new rumor that says five hours of screen on time, which is actually significantly better than the three to four that we were hearing before, um, that suggests that the Apple Watch might not be as much of a turd as I was uh, sort of predicting that it would yeah. be. If Android Wear devices can be used cross-platform, Apple's going to have a real hard time selling me an Apple Watch, that is for sure, because especially at the prices we're looking at, there's rumored pricing for the Apple Watch. Sport is rumored to be 349 with the metal versions coming in at, I think it was 600 or $700, and the all-gold wow. version over $15,000. If Apple is going to expect me to spend $700 on a watch, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use whatever damn phone I want, and I'm going to have my notification synced, damn it. That is how it is going to work. Otherwise, that is a, that is a lot to ask me to commit to in, in one ecosystem. Right. 
Yeah. Um. So I mean, what else is there to to really say about that? Uh, the developer claims that no jailbreaking was required in order to make that work. Um. Yeah, I guess that's. I'm surprised no jailbreaking was required. That's cool. I'm just surprised. Yeah, super cool. Well, it works apparently similarly to Pebble, which I guess is a good time for us to get into. Uh, Pebble is like, you, you can you can just tell what a what a bigger and more organized company they have become since they first yeah. launched the Pebble. Um, so like this ki this Kickstarter campaign is so beautifully orchestrated and planned. So originally it's like here's the Pebble time. It's awesome because color display up to I think it's. I don't know if it's only the time steel that gets up to 10 hours, 10 days of battery. I forget. I think Pebble Time is also has a longer battery life, but forgive me if I'm wrong. This new, you know, notification management system, blah, blah, blah. It's amazing. You should get one. Um, and they've raised, I think, is it 16 or 18 million on Kickstarter, making it by it's far, crazy by far the most funded Kickstarter campaign ever. And now they're coming right back at us the next week. Pebble Time Steel, which looks outstanding. Uh, it's well, that's that's what I, I called out during the show when we were talking about that. I was like, it doesn't look like they have a metal band mm -hmm. in their Kickstarter. And I was like, that's weird. And then, yeah, now they do. And this was posted by the Strict Nine on the forum. I'm just going to go ahead and pull this baby up. It looks bananas. Actually, it looks very Apple Watch-esque. Um, which is either a, a, a huge blow to the Apple Watch or a huge kudos to yeah. Pebble for coming up with such a beautiful design that's going to come in at, I think it's uh, two ninety nine is going to be the street price. Oh yeah, it gets better than that. So you know that whole Project Aura thing from, uh, from Google where yep. it's like, yeah, modular phones. Well, bam, modular watch. This looks amazing. Pebble Time is going to support what they're calling smart straps. So your smart strap could contain extra sensors for uh, jogging or uh, a, oh. a bigger, bigger battery. Oh, uh, wow. They're saying you can swap them in five to ten seconds. So you could actually have multiple smart straps depending on what oh, you're doing. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is like... If you could have like a heart rate sensor one or an extended battery one, I think that's all I'd even really want. Yeah, man. Because I'd be like, oh, I'm working out, and then, oh, all the other time because I don't like charging things. That is some goosebumps stuff right there. Like, that's imagining awesome. what... Because you look at what developers managed to do with the Pebble, and no disrespect to Pebble. They were a young company. It was, uh, it was, it was successful yeah. because the smartwatch market was in completely in its infancy. The Pebble was not amazing. Um, I, yeah. I was not the only one to have an issue with a Pebble. Eventually, uh, mine started <laughs> like bugging out on the display. In their defense, and the reason that I haven't really brought it up, uh, their customer support was outstanding. They didn't even make me oh. send my old one back. They just. We're like, can you send us a picture of the display garbled? I sent it. There was a new Pebble at my door within a week. Like, awesome. They did a great job as far as that was concerned. But the, the Pebble was not as complete or polished a product as this. And you look at what developers were able to do with that thing. Yeah. There was not a lot of hardware there. Well, now, now we're talking. Now we're talking. It's got a microphone. It's got smart straps. I mean, are we going to see smart straps with speakers, cameras? I don't know. Oh. Who knows? Speakers that could be a thing. I have no idea. Are we gonna see smart straps with touch interfaces? So you could like mm -hmm. do something uh, They're suggesting things like GPS and NFC um, Could be built oh, yeah. into this like instead of this is so smart instead of putting all the doodads in the watch Like I think this is Apple's mistake. They're trying to put right. so much in that watch We want it to have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and NFC and a display and a friggin dial on the side and a new interface And we're gonna do all this stuff and it's like well hold on a second You know What if we don't uh, what if we don't need all that? What if we just don't yeah yeah so this is uh this is really cool really exciting i am apparently on the list to review at least the pebble time no idea about the pebble time steel but i certainly hope they send one of each because i want to make sure that i'm covering these as well as possible i i i'm a kind of a pebble fanboy although a lot of you have noticed i'm using a g watch r now um it has taken me away from the pebble the pebble platform has aged and the pebble steel wasn't enough of a step forward to to hold on to me but pebble time looks it might be pebble time for me again oh dang 
Oh dang! That is what that is what makes you like the world's best sidekick. Is no matter how awful I am, you you treat it you treat it like I said something cool. I love you, man. You did, in my opinion. Aw, that's nice. I love you, man. Uh, what else we got here? We should have some. We should have some more good stuff. Um, all right. Uh, so Nvidia Titan X. This was posted by Job03. Okay. Are you posting this in uh, Twitch? Yep, yep. I've are you just so are you in the habit now? Like do I just not have to remind you anymore or Nope. I've I've got every single link so far. I even went and found the one for the Pebble Watch because that wasn't in order. Nice. All right. The whole Twitch chat is is freaking out with hearts. Oh, well we love you guys too. That's cute. All right. Yay. So this is the Titan X. Uh, basically it's more black. It's got apparently green LEDs in the fan now, so NVIDIA Ooh. is like, NVIDIA oh, is sharp. shaking things up. It does look beautiful. Um, okay. Let's go ahead. I'm just going to pull up. Uh, Anantech has an article with... Is that um, a white LED Titan logo, but green LED fan? It does look that way, doesn't it? And I'm a okay. little disappointed in them there. That's a little weird, yeah. I I'm kind of hoping it's RGB. Right, that but that would be very cool. even then that might not make sense because the fan is not so. So what? <laughs> yeah, at least I thought a non-tech had something. Uh, Titan X specs uh, specul speculation. Oh snap! Thank you. I, li I like how, um, I I'm just reading the notes on Linus Tech Tips forum right now, actually. And it says also, it looks like it will have a 12 gigabyte frame buffer. And without even thinking about it, my brain was like 11.5. <laughs> no, I had people asking <laughs> know, me I'm that like immediately. You know what? I can't, I can't find, I could have sworn there was, uh, I could have sworn there, I thought I saw it on a non-tech, that there was an article where they took what we knew and kind of filled in some of the we're guessing at blanks. Okay. And um, I'm not seeing that. I wonder. I wonder if I'm. It could be that I'm wrong, and it could be that. Um, yeah, it could be I'm wrong. It could be that it was taken down. I'm not sure. But but basically, there's an article by Ryan Smith on Anantech. Nvidia announces GeForce GTX Titan X, and it has a spec break breakdown. That is the one I'm looking for. Why can I not find that? There we go. All right, so let's pull this up. So the speculation is that uh, it is going to... No, we know it has a 12 gig frame buffer. Okay, so here you can see what we know and what's a question mark. Ryan Smith's a good guy. He doesn't mind me using his chart. Um, so he's guessing at 384-bit memory interface, and this is, this is a very good bet based on that medium size Maxwell that we already have in the GTX 980 and 970, uses a 256-bit interface and then some tomfoolery with the yeah. uh, with the 970 to partially disable, whatever, anyway. It's a 256-bit interface for most of the memory on the 970 and all of the 980. So in order to get more memory bandwidth on Titan X, either they're going to clock it higher, which to my knowledge, um, there's nothing available with higher than 7 gigahertz GDDR5. That's basically the ceiling for that technology. We know that NVIDIA doesn't have any kind of stacked memory technology coming out on Titan X. That would have been rumored at some point. Hasn't been. So we're guessing 384 bit. We know it has 12 gigs of VRAM. We know the transistor count is 8 billion, making this big Maxwell, you know, the supercomputer Tesla Maxwell, yeah. but for gamers. Um, it's getting 96 ROPs. That's a guess from Ryan Smith. Um, and should be on the same manufacturing process as uh, GTX 980 because we haven't heard anything about NVIDIA launching anything higher than that. And launch price, I like Ryan's estimate here. A large number. Large number. Yeah, that's because great. Because I have heard everything from $1,000 to $1,400 in the rumor mill, oh. and I have no knowledge whatsoever. I mean, when Titan launched, $1,000 for a gaming card was insane, and the sort of the answer from NVIDIA was, well, this isn't a gaming card. This is a CUDA development and like, yes. dual precision, you know, compute card and rendering workstation. -y the, the Titan thing. X is not positioned that way, though. It. it look, look at the photo. Well, uh, where, where's the photo? The, the photo shows on the box. It says like, 
uh, designed for gamers or something. Let me find this photo. Yeah, I'll try and find the one that's on Tech Gauge, I think, right? Inspired by gamers built by NVIDIA. Like, that's that's gamer marketing. Well, you can't even... Like, before to. it was a little kind of back and forth, This time, that's gamer marketing. No, NVIDIA screwed this up on Titan Z, too, quite frankly, because they couldn't decide... Yeah, there it is. Inspired by gamers built by NVIDIA. They couldn't decide on Titan Z because the, the whole announcement was like, the world's most powerful gaming card. And then when pressed, they're like, oh, well, it's, you know, for CUDA. Yeah. Because it was like $3,000 at launch and made absolutely no sense. Like, I, I do wonder yeah. if Titan Z was just... NVIDIA kind of testing the waters. Like, <laughs> what are people going to tolerate? <laughs> How much will people spend? Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see Titan X more than $1,000, but I would be I would be happy to see... Well, see, happy is such a funny word for this. I would be... I would be um, some of my faith would be restored if it launched at 1000 instead of more, because looking at what we know about Titan X specs... And what we can estimate based on Titan versus uh, versus uh, GK one hundred and four, uh, so GK GK one hundred versus GK one hundred and four, um, yeah. or was it, was it GM one hundred? I can't remember. Whatever one hundred versus one hundred and four of the last gen, I would expect it to be about you know forty percent faster than a GTX nine hundred and eighty, which is uh, now we're talking GM two hundred four versus GM two hundred. Um, so if it costs 40% more, then that would be like, okay, we're not going to pay a huge premium for this. But if you're getting double precision, NVIDIA could go, well, hey, that's worth a couple hundred bucks. And, you know, hey, it's blacker. That's worth a bit anyway, at least you <laughs> think. So we'll see what they do. Like I said yeah. earlier on the stream, for those of you who missed it, apparently our card is inbound. So Luke has his work cut out for him when he gets back. And I'm going to have yeah, to completely yeah. rearrange our video schedule that I spent like two hours on this week because we're trying to make yeah, room yeah. For, for buffering some content. So, yeah. We can just release like 16 videos about Titan X. <laughs> Where about it? Titan X Shroud. Titan X Heat Pipes. Top five. Top five screws that hold together Titan X. <laughs> Not all of the screws, just the top five. Top five games that push the Titan X's frame buffer more than other ones. Oh my goodness. You know what? You are starting to sound like a YouTuber. <laughs> it only took a few years, but you're starting to sound like a YouTuber, damn it. <laughs> I'm kind of sad, though. I'm still going to do it because it's a really cool looking card. But uh, I went by EVGA and they have their 980 Kingpin. And I was like, oh, cool, because I haven't actually seen that one yet. And I was going to do like a little mini video on it tomorrow. And I'm still going to do it. But that video is so hampered by the Titan X news. Yeah, man. Oh, jeez. Oh, well. But the suggestion... I'll, I'll call it the Titan X prequel. Because I can assure you that EVGA at some level is privy to what NVIDIA's got going on. So if they thought yep. it was worth it to release a 980 Kingpin, then this is the first hint that Titan X is going to be a heck of a lot more expensive than 980. Yeah. Because King... I say, Yeah, I might have said classified. I meant Kingpin. We yeah. have a 980 classified. Are you drunk? Yeah, I, I, I meant Kingpin. Yeah. Oh, you meant Kingpin. No, you said Kingpin. I meant Kingpin. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. No, you got it right. Hundred. Yeah. Everything was 100% okay until just now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Because <laughs> a Kingpin <sighs> typically carries, what, a $50, $100 premium over a classified? Uh, it's it's a lot. the The nine eighty kingpin is eight hundred dollars. Yeah. So if this is only two hundred more, I'm willing to bet this isn't only two hundred more. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. shall see. Um, I, for sure. Let's get into a little bit more Nvidia news. So j just because you've been like on flights and packing and all that stuff, you you missed you missed out big. So Nvidia. Pretty important. Yeah, NVIDIA announced the NVIDIA Shield again. Um, remember, guys, for those of you who don't remember this, the original Shield handheld was called the Shield. And then they renamed it Shield Portable when they launched the Shield tablet. And now we're getting the NVIDIA Shield, which is a console. It does not have a display. I believe it comes... Yeah, so it's priced at $199 with a game controller 
and uh, 50 games, including Crisis 3 and Borderlands the pre-sequel. I'm assuming that's the grid subscription that you get with it, and I'm not sure how long you get a grid subscription with it, because I know that they were talking about at some point uh, Shield Portable and Shield Tablet getting six months or something like that, three months maybe, some, whatever, they were getting like a window. This one, I don't know, maybe it just comes with a grid subscription. Anyway, so just they launched... Just this was posted by Giving TNT on the forum. Ah, thank you. So, so Shield is going to have a Tegra X, uh, Tegra X1 processor. So NVIDIA is claiming uh, twice the power of an Xbox 360 at one-fifth of the power consumption. It is going to be capable of decoding 4K at 60 FPS. It is going to be the first 4K Android TV. And it's, it's really funny. Someone put together a hilarious cut-up of Jensen saying TV, 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 <laughs> like... It seemed like, when you watch it like that, it seems like every word out of his freaking mouth during this thing must have been TV. TV, <laughs> TV, television, TV, television, Android TV, TV. Like, so they, they're really pitching it as like an Android TV device uh, that's capable of 4K, but it's also, um, it's also very much a console. So uh, Razer was showing off in their suite, and I really do think Razer's console is completely dead in the water at this point. Um, if it's an extra, if it's an extra hundred bucks for this thing, which is not running a Snapdragon 8 or whatever the heck, and uh, and is going to be able to legitimately run some serious games at 1080p and some not serious games at who knows maybe you can run games at 4k as well because it does have hdmi 2.0 out so you can legit hook this up to your 4k tv and have that 4k experience um and so anyway so it's got the gpu horsepower and oh, sorry right back to the razor booth so they showed off a really cool arena fighter based game that was for concurrent players um, this is what Android consoles have been building to. Android consoles, if they get game support for actual legitimate multiplayer games, up till now there hasn't been a whole lot of like, sit around with your bros and play games on controllers, Android games. If Nvidia is pushing this, and boy have they ever demonstrated that they're pushing this, ever since they announced console mode for the original Shield, and, and then it was like this stupid kind of experience where you have to get like an on-the-go adapter and like a USB Ethernet thing and then you could run 1080p 60 instead of 720p and like you had to you know charge it up before you did it and then okay well hold on maybe if you use a splitter so I use a splitter and a powered hub in order to charge the shield and run it at the same time but yeah. and then and then it's like okay so yeah that's like pretty doofusy. Then we got Shield Tablet, where they were really pitching using it as a console. And hey, now we've got support for multiple wireless controllers. We've got our own controller. There's all this awesome stuff. Nvidia didn't have their own controller before. They are pushing hard. So now there's a dedicated console. It's 40 plus hours of battery life on the controller. It comes with a remote that includes voice activation, so you can use all your Google Now nonsense with it. Um, and Grid. Grid's a big deal. Um, NVIDIA is claiming 150 milliseconds of latency playing games remotely, which again, no CSGO, forget it, not going to happen. But for racing games, for third person, you know, adventure games, that's going to be very playable. And I know this because I've been in the grid beta for over a year now. It is surprisingly not bad very surprisingly not bad and i'm not as close to an nvidia data center as some people would be right, one, yeah. one, once they start putting grid centers around the planet we are going to be talking about especially in in places like in small dense places like i don't know the uk or japan you could be within a distance that would give you you know fiber latencies in the you know five millisecond or lower range of yeah. of a grid center if it comes to that and it may actually, for many gamers, especially casual ones who might not play a particular game, like that's something to consider for the gamers that are saying, you know, online streaming gaming is never going to happen. Not everyone buys a game for 60 bucks and then puts 150 hours into it. Yeah. Some people are more like a, a, a casual browser and they don't want to buy every game, but if they have you know, 50 games or 100 or 150 or 500 games at their fingertips, they might play this one for an hour or they might play that one for a couple hours. And this is going to really appeal to those people. Yeah. They should just start installing them on all the Tesla charging stations. Ha! That'd actually be kind of awesome. 
Sit and, like, be, play like, games. Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> That'd Appa- be great. Apparently, the grid service is going to come with unreleased games that will be on Shield uh, at launch. Remember, NVIDIA's got those deep developer relationships. Yeah, they do. Imagine that. And what's also really cool about Grid, and again, why I want Home Grid. This is still not the grid I'm looking for. I want Home Grid, where you just like pile in a pile of GPUs, and then you have basically unlimited horsepower yes. that you can divvy up however you want. Um, I mean, you, we could potentially be looking at you know every game on Max, no matter what because they can throw as much GPU horsepower at it as they want. And yeah, it'll be it'll be 1080p. Uh, 1080p 60, I believe, is the premium service, with the normal service being 720p 30. So for small people with smaller TVs, effectively. Max details, though. It's going to be nice. That's awesome. You know, maybe we should do, like, a, maybe we should probably do a straw poll on this. Straw poll... And I want your guys' honest answer. I know a lot of the time we do, like, just troll straw polls, or, or we'll have, like, a, like a troll answer. Yeah. Um, dang it, I typed in the wrong thing. And No, yes, I want to leave this page. Okay. Will you subscribe... Okay, what price to subscribe to Grid Premium? That's what I want to know. So, just for context, guys, uh, Netflix is going to be, what, 8 bucks a month? Um, Amazon, do they still include their, their Prime Video service with a Prime membership? I can't remember the I details. I think so. I don't know because that's not available in Canada. Yeah. So, so but I, don't, I, think, I think they do. Okay. So Netflix is going to be eight, 8 bucks a month or whatever. Um, let's see. What, what, else is, like, what else could we really compare it to? Hulu is in that same kind of price range, or Hulu Plus, yeah. rather, is in that same price range. Uh, Crunchyroll is in the neighborhood of about eight bucks a month or 10 bucks a month or something like that. Vessel will be much cheaper than that. Yeah, Vessel's three. Um, but Vessel doesn't have any exclusive content. It's just That's early true. access. So yeah. like, whatever. Um, yeah. I'm talking about like exclusive content where you're actually like buying content for your subscription. Uh, so, yeah. okay. Netflix, Hulu, mainly. HBO Go. Oh yeah, that's, that's uh, uh, what's the new, what's the new thing? HBO Now, which is going to be different from HBO Go, is apparently uh, could be launching in April for fifteen dollars a month. Um, that's not that cheap. That's actually. yeah. It's so, um, it's not clear what content will be included. Sorry, we're switching news topics. Okay, whatever. Let's do the HBO yeah. thing because it kind of ties into this. Uh, okay. It's not clear what content will be included, but in my mind, I really do wonder if it's going to be everything. At fifteen dollars a month. We're talking yeah. like you're paying a dollar per thing you're going to watch if you're watching just new stuff and you don't follow every HBO show. Like, yeah, that is some pretty premium pricing they got going on there. And that is really uh, expensive. But it's 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 uh, <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So the article from Engadget, this was posted by Rohit Suma- Kumar SP. Um, so the article from Engadget speculates that. It might only have older content because HBO probably doesn't want their entire viewer base to cut the cable. Because I suspect HBO subscriptions are the only thing keeping a lot of people from cord cutting. Yeah. So fifteen bucks a month for that. So let's go ahead. Let's 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 do like a few different price points here. Let's go less than five bucks. Okay. Let's go. Um, We're talking about grid right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Five yeah. to five to ten. Uh, let's go 10 to uh, 15. Let's go. Let's let's see. Would people pay like 15 to 25 dollars for for all you can eat game service um, at the cost of needing to deal with 150 milliseconds of latency? Because remember, you can go buy CS:GO and install yep. that on your computer, and then you yep. could play everything else on Grid if you don't care. Um, and then let's go. Um, I, I'm not even going to have an option over 50 because I, I don't think they're going to charge anywhere near that much. Um, and I'm Ugh. just going to have an option that says no way. People are calling me out for being tired. I, I, I have to be... The, the only like desk chair thing in here is being currently taken up by Brandon because he needs to edit. So I'm like laying in bed. I had two hours of sleep last night and I was walking around the conference all day today. <laughs> so yes, I am extremely tired. I'm yeah. sorry for the yawning. Because I was, I was talking to you at like whatever time that was. That was like midnight, after midnight my time? I, I, yeah. Yeah, I it was like it was one like, my I time. Think it was like five, I think I finally went to bed at like 5 a.m. local time. 
and then I had to wake up at like seven. <laughs> so, either either yeah. either your boss is like a terrible person or you're extremely dedicated. <laughs> All right, now I I, I I I can you can you see the uh, can you see the stream right now? I'm, I I want to uh, talk yeah. about That's I want to okay. talk about this grid premium thing as the results roll in. So it looks like they're going to have a lot of customers. This is something I wasn't expecting. Our audience, I was expecting to go hardcore, no way. Right. Or like less than five bucks. Yeah. But you guys are giving us some real interesting feedback. It looks like a clear over 50% of you are willing to pay between five and $15 for an on-demand oh, yeah. gaming service. This could be... No way is only 25%. Wow. That's right. This could be a... Oh, so so hold on. Let's look at this a different way. Hold on. So 31 plus 25 plus 8 plus 2. So plus 10 is 35 is 60... 67. Two thirds of you are willing to pay more than $5 for grid premium a month. That <laughs> is... That would be way easier to do if you just did the negative. If oh. you just added no way and below $5 together and then took that away from 100 <laughs> uh, either way though that blows me away Nvidia yeah, me in, if Nvidia's long term plan and we've been talking about this for a long time right Luke if Nvidia's oh, yeah. long term like plan the start of when show <laughs> is to not make graphics cards anymore as their business yeah this is it this is the time it just happened yeah <laughs> cuz like a subscription service like this is the difference between being a company that makes widgets and being a company with like big, massive revenue to continue developing the service and to like I mean you look at what happened with Netflix. All of a sudden they go from we're a streaming service to we develop Our original programming. House. Yeah, like Nvidia could even get into games at that point, considering how much they're already have their fingers pretty deep into development of games and the development uh, of game technologies and stuff yep. like that but then yep. again think about this imagine a world where nvidia gets to make their own games and how poorly those will run on competing hardware yeah yeah or but they would probably only release through the grid service i was gonna say imagine a world where the yeah. only way to get access to a particular game this is the NVIDIA console. Grid is the console. That Android console is almost like hedging their bets. So you yeah. can like play stupid Android games or, or maybe great Android games or whatever. NVIDIA seems to not care about that anymore. So you can play Android games on it or, or whatever, but you're going to need this to get Grid right. and people yeah. are going to buy it. Yeah. Very interesting to me, especially if you look at how competitive their products are already with other devices. Like Shield Tablet is a good tablet. Shield Tablet yep. with a $5 a month grid service is an unbelievable value. Yeah. Scary. It's kind of scary. Like I, I like Nvidia as much as the next guy, but they also they also kind of scare me sometimes. Yeah. I don't know. I was talking to someone the other day about how, like, I, I maybe this was even on WAN show. Wow, it might be. That's awkward. Um, about how, like, I, I'm getting a little frustrated with Google because they're getting, they, they kind of dropped that do no evil thing, or don't and be they're kind of doing a lot of evil lately. And like, I, I'd way rather Microsoft be the big mega corporation because while I might not be a huge fan all the time. They don't seem to do like massively horrible things. Well, they've nice. they've gotten past it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they've yeah. gotten over the hump. It's yeah, all, exactly. It's like it's almost like you have to get you have to become accustomed. You have to grow into your britches. You have to become accustomed <laughs> to being a mega power, and then it's like, okay, you know, maybe we maybe we just don't need to crush everything. Maybe we're okay, and like they can also make a product, and we can make a product. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's cool. <laughs> I don't know if Google will ever be okay with that, though. I think uh, Google's new motto needs to be uh, world domination or nothing. World domination or nothing. They seem to be, they seem to be headed that way, don't they? Yeah, I mean, they should just change it. I, uh... Someone in the chat. Developers, developers, developers. <laughs> developers. That should be, like, Pebble's <laughs> motto. I don't want to talk about Pebble anymore on the stream, but they really yeah. do seem to be focused on here's a platform 
Like, make it make it awesome. We'll make it as awesome as we can, but, like, you guys make it more awesome, and that's great. Um, yeah. Okay, we should probably do our sponsors. Um, yes. Speaking of, of making things awesome, actually, you're going to be kind of... I didn't add you to the sponsor scenes, so you're just not here. But cool. Feel free to feel free to be a disembodied voice. So our All first right. sponsor today is Lynda.com. So Lynda.com is not exactly a new sponsor for us. If you guys haven't heard of Lynda.com, well, this must be your first time watching Linus Tech Tips. Yay! Or fast as possible. Basically, the advantage of Lynda.com is that you can learn at your own pace and it's affordable. So whether you want to master Excel, learn business negotiation tactics like. Really, they have courses for that. Seriously. You want to build a website, boost your Photoshop skills, get better at operating your DSLR, learn video editing. Bobbity, 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 bobbity. They're adding courses every week. They have thousands of courses taught by industry experts. You can take notes as you go, refer to them later. You can download tutorials, watch them on the go, including access on your iOS and Android devices now. You can create and save playlists, and membership gives you unlimited access for 25 bucks a month. But if you kind of go, well, hold on a second, Linus, $25 is a lot. And it is. $25 is a lot of money for me. I'm sure it's a lot of money for a lot of you guys. Um, you can try it out for 10 days for free. And you get unlimited all-you-can-eat for free at lynda.com slash wanshow. So you guys are going to want to check that shiz out. Uh, next up, we've got HyperX PAX East. Check out our yeah. PAX East coverage, powered yeah. by HyperX. Uh, also check out the HyperX YouTube channel. They've got a lot of great gaming content over there. Uh, we even do content for them from time to time. I think they have a video that we did for them that's coming out soon on PCI Express versus SATA. Um, I hope I didn't spoil anything. Or maybe it's already up and I didn't notice. I don't know. Don't worry too much about that. Just go subscribe. It's over at youtube.com slash hyperx. And if you're having trouble like finding it, I know like Social Blade, uh, Blade freaks out if I try and do that. Uh, youtube.com slash Kingston HyperX also takes you to the channel. And finally, Luke, you are hardcore missing out. And I'm really sorry that you have to miss out on this. The loot crate? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, Nick's going to come in uh, and hand cam it up for me, but I am unboxing this month's Bro. Loot Crate. Woo! I feel, I feel abandoned. You... I went to Loot Crate today and tried to, like, talk to them, but they were being swarmed. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. It was super full. There was, no, there was no talking to them. Oh, I can't use that camera because it's being used by another application. You know what's awkward? We should talk to our cameraman because um, I'm pretty sure that that like whatever camera Nick is holding right now has better color than the Black Magic. Oh, it's it's because I it's because I did it. Yeah, they could oh. fix it. Okay, well I'm gonna have to. Uh, uh, the Skype is grabbing those, so uh, yeah, it can't it can't have that. All right, well I'm gonna open up the loot crate and I'm just well, gonna hold you, it up for Nick, you guys. Nick, can you not put the camera where you just did? Wait, what? Oh, you can see it. Oh, <laughs> right. Luke's watching me on this camera, and Nick just like puts it down on the table. It's like what a freaking troll! Look at that guy. What a guy! That Nick guy. What a guy! That Nick guy. Jeez. I hate that guy. I love that guy. I love everyone today. I'm just Yay. having like a, I'm having a love day. We uh, we yeah. filmed Channel Super Fun today. It was bananas. We did the soccer boppers. Oh, I missed that. Oh, I was hoping you guys were gonna wait. No, oh, no, sucks. sorry. We had to we had to get her done. It. Fun? We we went like tournament style again. Um, you know those. Wreck, everyone. You know those old pies that were in the fridge, from like that oh, expired in like no. December. Oh no. All I'm gonna say is the video involves those pies. Oh no, that's not good. There's no way that's good. So oh, the upcoming channel Super Fun is gonna be bananas. But let's uh, let's open up this loot crate first. So I I usually Nick <clears throat> sends me notes on these things, and I'm sure that I'm supposed it's way to more fun just know to stuff. Go through it. That's like the whole thing with loot crate. But no, I, it would be nice if I knew at least the theme. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. We're usually true. usually I don't. Uh, so this is February's play crate. All right. So what we go? Oh, these are awesome! It has a hex bug. Oh, that's cool. These things are freaking bananas. Uh, we actually did. Uh, we d speaking of channel super, super fun. fun. Yeah. yeah. It's not the same kind of hex bug. So it's uh, this is the hex bug 
Ant. So we did uh, we did Hexbug Racing, the ones that just kind of vibrate on the table, and then they uh, they they kind of like move around and they kind of move around on the table. So we did Hexbugs with Bug Racing before, but this is a new kind of Hexbug, and it's packaged extremely well. I claim to be a professional unboxer, and I cannot get this out of the box. Wall. Wall wrecked. Right. I, I like that it's crate packing simulator, and I think the box is actually a, a like a board game. Did oh, you notice that? No. I yeah. Have, I have not, not noticed. Not, not for the bug, for the whole loot crate. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. I have not noticed anything that isn't this ant. Oh my goodness. Look at this. It has little rolly wheels. That <laughs> This thing is adorable. Whoa, it's fast. Whoa, yeah. Holy cow. That's sick. Okay, hold on. Let me, uh, I'm just going to put it on the back of my laptop so you guys can see how fast it is. Ah! Ah! No! <laughs> oh, I love, I love hex bugs. Okay, that's clearly not going to work what I'm trying to do right now. But it's got a little, uh, it's got a little wire in the front so it doesn't get stuck on anything. So it bounces off. All right, what else we got in here? Is that a book? How do they include a book? in this it's like a full wow that's a full book no like an actual book yeah. it's uh ready player one new york oh, times bestseller cool. by ernest that's Klein. a really good book like legitimately that is incredible they must have had this done as a completely custom print for them because um the grown-ups harry potter apparently because there is no price on it this seems to like there's there's usually a price like an ISBN yeah, yeah. blah bitty blah bitty whatever. Well, let me look it up on Amazon. I know that book like 100. percent I know that book. That's awesome. All I right. I was like thinking about getting it. Now we've got uh, create your own vinyl art toy money world. That's pretty cute. So this is a mini money. It money mar, mini money. It comes with uh, three markers: black, red, and blue. And you go ahead and like draw on it. That's pretty adorable. And then what else we got? This looks like a little poster. I'm going to go ahead and try and open this baby. I like these Loot Crate sponsor spots. We always go way over time on them, but we do. they're just yeah. kind of fun. So Ready Player One is $17. Wow. I don't. I think Loot Crate like... increased their pricing though, right? I don't think it's 1337 anymore. Yeah, but it's. I think, I think it's that's only in Canada, and I think that's because of the dollar issues. Right. I'm not sure, though. This is cute. So it's like, I don't know. A or it's console 30. or something. It's Pac-Man. I can't really see this. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, what else we got? Oh, yeah I'm, yeah, I'm not holding it up to you. I'm holding it up to that I camera. Know, yeah. All right, yeah. so Crate Packing Simulator 2015 Game Instructions. Welcome to Loot Crate's first original board game. So you can see there's a game board in there. Um, the goal is simple. Be the first player to have all five items in your crate. Use the rock, paper, scissors, dice to determine who will make the first move. Once a first player is chosen, continue to use the rock, paper, scissors, dice with these numerical values to move your game token. So depending on who plays what, you move one, two, or three. Land on a star, pick up one item, land on a circle, dice battle, blah, 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 etc., etc. Oh, neat. So it seems to include items from previous loot crates, like the 8-bit glasses. Oh, okay. So I guess yeah. this is like if you are already subscribed or something, then that's yeah. good. Yeah. All right. It comes with Super Fight, the Loot Crate deck. This is a 100-card version of the viral card game Super Fight, designed exclusively for Loot Crate by Skybound. These cards are only available in this exclusive deck. Jeez, this one's got a lot. There's a button. Yeah. Um, there's the rock, paper, scissors, dice. So it's got rocks, papers, and scissors on it. Well, maybe yeah. everything is included with this one. I don't see 8-bit glasses, though. Um, interesting. What else we got? There's a Firefly Online Buddhist Temple concept art thing. Firefly Online. What? Is that an upcoming game or something? Yeah, man. I haven't even heard of that. Yeah, dude. I hope it's not as bad as the movie. I never finished the movie. I don't know if I told you that. Yeah, that, that did not happen. And then <laughs> their, uh, their Loot Crate magazine has a history of game controllers. Cool. It might be as bad as the movie. I sincere, oh, and game pieces for the board game. I sincerely hope it's not as bad as the movie because, oh man, like I, I really enjoyed the show. Uh, anyway, right. Use offer code Linus to save 10% on Loot Crate. Um, I really enjoyed oh, the wow. show, but that movie was bad. It did not know what it was. It had no identity. It had no charm. It just, it was just like trying too hard to be Mission Impossible kind of thing. Right. I still liked it, but like, yeah. I liked it because I'm a fanboy of Firefly. 
not because it's yeah anyways yeah i just looked it up and apparently it's a thing already oh. i didn't know it was released but it looks super not good <laughs> all right then well at any rate everything else in that loot crate was pretty fun yeah um, it might be good. I don't know. This is kind of a... So we'll get into rapid-fire topics because we're actually coming pretty close to the end of the show here. WhatsApp now permanently bans users using third-party apps. Uh, Facebook has been cracking down on the developers of third-party apps, and now they are just outright banning people who insist on using them by blacklisting their phone numbers. So while you could get a new phone number, um, it is going to be a real pain in the butt to try to use third-party apps on WhatsApp. You must use the official yeah. app from now on. This was posted by Victoria's Secret on the forum. Did you uh, post this one in chat? I did already. Wow, uh, I don't even see you moving. You're like a freaking ninja over there. I'm a ghost, dude. Hey, are we both wearing the same shirt today? We are, actually. Nice! Yes. Nice! I, I made sure that I had uh, proper show shirts, and then when I got here, I realized that my Keep On Digging shirt is a medium. So nice. That is going to be had. hot. <laughs> that is like going to be some sexy stuff going on over there. <laughs> I am liking it already. I haven't even seen these goods. Oh jeez. <laughs> well, you have. Yeah, okay. Well, not not just, not just today. Not on video. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, who says I didn't video it? <laughs> they make real small cameras these days. Oh my god. Uh Huawei is the next Nexus maker, confirms Kevin Yang from iSupply. Uh, this was posted by Victoria's Secret, Google partnering up with a Chinese OEM for the new Nexus. So Huawei is the biggest competitor to Xiaomi, and um, they're also apparently partnering with LG on another Nexus device later in 2015. Um, the speculation, the uh, original article here is from Gizmokina, I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw that up on the screen here. But the speculation is that maybe we will see a return to affordable Nexus devices. Uh, this doesn't yeah. seem to be... Yeah, here we go. Could Huawei be the next Nexus maker? Um, I would really like to see that. In my mind, the Nexus 6 was a disaster. Uh, between Lollipop, me seeing people refer to it as Android Vista... Um, and and just the fact that that hardware was so expensive for something that didn't offer a tangibly better experience than um, yeah. you know other similarly priced pieces of hardware, I just couldn't get into the Nexus Six. Uh, very much prefer the Droid Turbo, although I've been using the Moto E, and uh, so far I can tell you guys, it's a hundred and fifty dollar phone. Whatever my expectations were going in, they were too high. Um, oh. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too impressed with it so far, but I gotta, I'm, in the video, I'm going to try to do a better job of understanding in my brain space that it's a $150 phone. In my brain space. I Honestly, like between you and me, Luke, um, yeah. I have been seriously putting off doing phone reviews. It's not like there haven't been yeah. phones that I could look at. I could yeah. have done a later review of the 6 Plus. Um, I could have done the Z3 Compact, something people have been asking me to review forever. Um <laughs> You know, I could have done the Note 4, something we, we definitely had access to, and I was just like, yep. eh, I did the Nexus 6, big phones are still too big, so there's yeah. that. So my Note 4 review would just be that in a nutshell, but with, like, TouchWiz over top of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Um, so I've been putting it off because I love the Droid Turbo, and I just hate switching my phone, especially because I like using that phone so much. So the Moto Brandon 8 has been a rude awakening. There was a Kaylee cosplayer, so I took a picture with her, and I had Brandon take the picture on my phone, and Brandon was like, wow, yeah, you're right, the camera's really bad. It's like, yeah, man, it's 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 horrible. I, I think I think the Moto E second gen, actually, I like the camera better than your old Moto X. Probably. It's not that bad, but it has no flash. Yeah. No yeah. flash! How am I gonna how am I gonna have a flashlight when I'm crawling around in my attic? That's so stupid. How much does an LED cost? Not much. I can tell you that much. Anyway, uh Gabe Newell, this is posted yeah. by Ah Ming on the forum, says, and I quote, zero percent of people get motion sick using the new Vive VR headset that was a collaborative effort between Valve and HTC. 
Mm-hmm. Holy balls. So they are using a completely new system for motion tracking that they're calling Lighthouse. And the way that yep. this works is it actually has... Um, I forget if they are sensors or emitters, but either the headset has emitters and their sensors or the other way around. Um, but it has these devices in the corners of the room that are constantly monitoring where you are in relation to them. And they can even track not just the headset itself, but also peripheral devices or even multiple people with headsets and peripherals. This looks bananas. Oculus had a window where there was going to be no competition and the Rift was going to win. That window is closing extremely quickly. That window's gone. Uh, did you? I don't. I don't know if you've heard this, but the rift, like, in what seems def, what in what definitely seems like a response to the Vive, the rift, uh, they, they've kind of stepped back and been like, well, we might have said a release date that might be a little earlier than we expected, so we might be releasing later and all this kind of stuff, and they're kind of pushing theirs back now, which means that the Vive might actually have a consumer release before um, CV1. Wow. So, uh, Oculus might have just got super wrecked. Um, it's it's a lot of it's still kind of rumor mill stuff, but yeah, it, it was late 2015. That was the plan. Yeah. And then there there there's been rumor mill going around that they're going like, mm, we might have kind of estimated that wrong. We might have to do it a little bit later, which could be really bad because Vive is apparently ready to go. Wow. I uh, you know yeah. what? For me. It's going to come down to this. Like, I'll probably get them all anyway, because to review them. But the yep. one that I buy with my personal credit card, not the company card to sit and collect dust at the office because it's not mine. The one that I yep. buy and take home, the one that I, like, order two of, one on each card, where I'm going to need yep. one and we're going to need one for, you know, testing, you know, graphics card performance with VR headsets. Like, like we're going to need yep. all of them at the office. The one yep. that I buy is going to be the one that is released and supports Eve Valkyrie, Elite Dangerous, and at a later date, Star Citizen, because we are nowhere near the amount of graphics horsepower to run that game and nowhere near release. Elite Dangerous and Eve Valkyrie, whatever supports those, if it's $200, I'll buy it. If it's $300, I'll buy it. And if it's $500, I am going to buy it. One thing that's going to be interesting is um, Valve, obviously, really good relationship with a lot of different publishers. Um, but relationship. Oculus is becoming a publisher. And I believe, is Oculus not publishing Valkyrie? I don't remember. I think Oculus might be publishing Valkyrie, meaning that it might not go to Vive. I, I know, I, I think it was going to Morpheus or something else. Um, but yeah, I think they might be able to lock that down, which is going to make this really unfortunate but really interesting at the same time and could kind of start a war between Vive and Rift which would be pretty interesting to see I'm very very happy that this happened because um, going to places like CES and seeing the sheer amount of VR stuff that was there that was just all garbage was super disappointing because I I, like I went to CES and was like okay this is going to be sick because I'm going to see the new revision of uh, the Oculus which is going to be great the Oculus Rift which is going to be great Um, and then I'm going to see all this other stuff and I'm excited to see the competition and I got to CES and I was like there is no competition there I am not seeing the competition because it is not here because it doesn't exist and then now finally there's someone that can push them and apparently really freaking hard (laughs) Which is great. I'm, I'm so happy that this happened. I'm liking this. I'm I'm stoked. Which and you're right. It's a co-publishing deal, and so I yeah. I may not get to. Okay, I'll settle for Elite Dangerous then. Um, are you gonna buy it? By the way, have you tried it? Elite Dangerous. Yeah. I've tried it a little bit. It seems actually pretty sick. I, I'll I'll very likely buy it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, we should we should start playing like seriously playing around the same time so we can like bro it up. You yeah, know what's funny. Yeah. So many people, so many people were like really confused by that that spat that we had at the end of that tech quickie video. The what? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. so I wanna I wanna go on the record and clarify that. Um, the Luke was going to host that video. That was the plan. Yep. But Luke yep. was really sick and lost his voice, so I yep. had to come host it. And then Fractal, Josh from Fractal, put Luke up to quitting. 
like on camera in the middle of me filming. And yeah. then the plan from Josh's side was for me to not know it was happening, but yeah. that's dumb. So yeah. Nick told me, so the whole thing was completely staged. So, yeah. so I think we, I think some people were like, some people were like, uh, um, that was really like awkward and hard to watch. Um, I think we might have overdone a little bit, and we probably should have. We probably should have clarified at the end that like that didn't happen. Yeah, <laughs> because that I was. I thought you did. I didn't even know because I I walked out of the door and then uh, as as some people noticed I wasn't wearing <laughs> shoes, so so I walked out of the door and I just kind of like stood on the the on the mat outside of the door and with my ear to the door waiting for you to be done, but I couldn't really hear what you were saying. I could just tell that you were talking. So I, I had no idea that there wasn't a clarification until it went live, which was kind of hilarious because the sheer amount of like forum PMs, tweets, uh, just everything that I got was just insane. And I, I loved it where people would be like, well, he walked out not wearing shoes and with a mic pack on his hip. So it's probably fine. <laughs> That's like, yeah. awesome. Uh, oh, Nick wanted me to let you guys know that the merch.line is techtips.com, the store. Uh, has been restocked. I've had a lot of people messaging me being like, yo, you're, at the end of your videos, you're always like, hey, you could buy a t-shirt like this one. I went in your store. There's like no t-shirts, dude. And I was like, yeah. Uh, we have a new rep at, um, at District Lines. Um, apparently lanyards are going to be coming soon. I had sort of forgotten about that. So that's cool. That's I was hoping I was cool. going to be able to give some away at PAX East, but they didn't come quite fast enough. Yeah, that's a bummer. Um, we have a new shirt design coming. Um, like one of the one of the ongoing jokes here for um, let me see if I can find it. One of the ongoing jokes here at Linus Media Group is we don't sleep and sleep is for uh, sleep is for wusses. Should, what do you what do you think, Luke? Should I tease the artwork because I think it's amazing? Sure. Yeah. No, that's cool. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can. I think I think Nick messaged it to me. Um. Bah, I'm really frustrated. I can't find it. The, oh, the problem I will is I, try to find it. I talked to Nick way too much. He he would have used push, right? Probably, but it might not have been sent to him. It might have been sent to him through some form of hosting. Um, oh balls. Let me see. I'll see if I can find it. Anyway, in the meantime, uh, I'll do another rapid fire thing. If you if you want to look for it. Then I'll, uh, yeah, I'll do I'm that. Yeah, I'm looking for it right now. Okay, Google is apparently uh, headlines a little bit misleading here. Uh, this was posted by Victoria's Secret. I'll go ahead and I'll I'll do the the post if you're looking for this. Then. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So Google is apparently working on a technology, uh, or at least has published a paper about a technology that would allow it to tell whether facts on the internet are actually true. And this is 100% theoretical now but could be both amazing and absolutely terrifying in the future. So I'll go ahead and pull up the article on newscientist.com. Uh, but the, and again, all these, all these are so sensationalist. Google wants to rank websites based on facts, not links or traffic or popularity. Well, hold on, hold on a second. They haven't, they haven't said that, but what no. they're trying to figure out is how to make, how to check a website's um, general accuracy by taking facts that they know like Linus Sebastian's birthday is August 20th if that was posted on that website then that would be like like a, a like a veracity score like that would be a truth score and then the higher a website's or web pages truth score the higher it would be ranked because the better the likelihood that the other information on it is true and that seems to be how they are planning to have this work and this is incredibly cool. I mean, there's a couple of, so, you know, sites like The Onion are probably gonna have a much harder time getting good search rankings because, you know, a lot of that, a lot of that traffic still comes from people who don't know that The Onion is nonsense. Yeah. Um, and so when something goes hyper viral and it's a fake news story, it's gonna, it's gonna hurt sort of that business, I guess, but oh well, um, I suppose. Um, but the bigger thing to me is this could hurt um, and I don't want to, I don't want this to turn into a religious debate. Okay. That's not oh, the geez. objective here. Yeah. I'm, I'm going there with this. Oh, um, geez. so if a site 
had information on it that was clearly factually inaccurate, like dinosaurs never existed, for example. Oh, jeez. It would allow Google to bury other information on the site and present it as not fact. And it would take information from sites that contain facts, like that dinosaurs existed, and it would take those articles and call them fact. And I'm not gonna. I'm not weighing in on this debate. I am not getting involved in this. But you just kind of did. No, no. But... I'm not gonna say where I stand on it. But what I'm going to say is that it could create a situation where the beliefs of people, whether you know, where where something is hotly debated, okay, where the beliefs of people could be undermined by Google sorting based on the Google facts. Google sorting of their might database. ignore those things, though might manually ignore those things do you think it will because the, the, there's interesting stuff i i don't know if it will or not i doubt it honest. come on man um well i don't know filtering for religious stuff might be a really good pr move for google to do and is actually fairly understandable um but another thing that could be kind of an issue is rumors yeah rumor mill websites there's a lot of really big rumor mill websites wccf tech is largely rumor mill stuff for graphics yep. cards yep um what happens with rumors are, the, are those facts no nope, but are they lies facts. no yeah, not, they're not really fake necessarily so no, there's not really this raises up this this is like we're gonna have kettles of fish to boil for for weeks on weeks on yes. weeks yeah. um when we when it when and if they decide to start implementing something like this. Um, so I, I'll be very interested to, like, it, oh, man. Like, there's so many good things that can come of it. You know, mm -hmm. like, are carrots bad for you? If Google could just, if Google could just destroy the search rankings of anyone yeah. that says carrots are bad for you, or is oxygenated water going to help you perform better at sports? Could help for, um, yeah, like, basically what you're saying but more specifically just medical things in general because BS there's so much medical stuff. hubbub all, all over the internet yes it's 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 crazy so if they could help people and apparently they've looked into working with the mayo clinic already okay so like health stuff cool. is a big deal uh like they no i think they've actually worked with the mayo clinic on certain things um so like like health information is going to be like a, a really really huge part of this like if because you know, you know those businesses that are structured like create yeah. a complete BS product and then yeah. create an entire network of websites about reviewing that product and giving it positive reviews and fake testimonials yeah. so that it clutters up the search results. That is what this needs to destroy. Well, like, yeah. It would be nice if Google could start hunting out... No. Google probably won't do this, but it would be nice if I guess Amazon could do it, but I actually don't even think Amazon will do it, but hunting out fake reviews, because mm -hmm. that's starting to be a really big issue. Yeah, big problem. Huge percentages of reviews are fake-o. Yep. Which is not not cool at all. Well, I think that's Very pretty much it. Uh, we're we're an hour and a half in here, and uh, it's, been a, it's been a great show, and we've enjoyed it very, very muchly. And I think uh, we will we will see you guys uh, we'll see you guys next week same bad time same bad channel. Um, did you have anything to add? I mean, are you are you looking forward to the rest of the show? Yeah, um, I, I said this a little bit earlier, which was kind of we, we we missed the boat a little bit. We we went to the wrong parade. Um, GDC was where all the the fun ended up being. Apparently, a lot of computer hardware vendors actually bailed out last minute. Uh. Um, so like nvidia was supposed to be here right yeah they're always and the then yeah and then not that long ago they bailed out because they did their launch at gdc right yeah they did their launch at gdc so, and they have their own event coming in like two weeks yeah so like a lot of different hardware vendors actually didn't end up showing up so i was pretty worried like at one point in time today i was legitimately going through and being like we are screwed we're not gonna get half of the videos that we need um and then someone pointed me out into this like what is that noise sorry i'm playing with the thing from the loot crate. oh geez um one of that that sounded horrible uh one of the people that i met up with pointed me out to this like corner that was hidden behind the twitch booth and like spotswood tech benches is there 
Um, what? I know. I know. He he's in partnership with EK Waterblocks. Oh. They they like have one booth together. Nice. Uh, EVGA is there. Enermax is there. They don't have anything new, but they're there. Um, PNY is there. Like like that's it's it's where all like the all like the little tech companies kind of huddled together nice. in the corner. Right. <laughs> yeah. So Huddle we're gonna make warmth. it, but like, yeah. Put, put an eight, put a two ninety X in the middle. <laughs> yeah. It it, it 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 was and is close. I I think there's like exactly enough stuff for us to make exactly the amount of videos that we need to make. Nice. But like there should have been an abundance, but then GDC was crazy. One of the reasons why is um, PAX East was only 11 months ago. It mm. should have been 12 months ago. Oh, interesting. It wasn't a year ago. Um, they, they moved it because it was on spring break or something before. Ah, um, or it, well, maybe, maybe it wasn't exactly a month difference or something like that. So it, it brought it much closer to GDC and it brought it closer to CES. So it's right. harder for hardware companies, which are going to have bigger development times, to be yeah. able to actually have something. Right. And a lot of the gaming guys are pulling their hair out because they flew directly from GDC to PAX East and are hosting again, which wow. is crazy. Yeah, like That's there's bananas. a lot of those booth guys that haven't had a break. They, they hosted GDC, they flew, they set up, they hosted PAX East. Like, absolutely nuts. So it's a pretty crazy timing. Yeah. But All yeah, right. there's some cool stuff. There's a hardware company that I didn't even know existed they're very, very new. Um, I think they were founded in 2014. Oh, They're okay. a Korean company that makes RAM, and it's easily some of the best RAM that I've ever seen. And, like, every single one of their different kits are some of the best RAM I've ever seen in terms of, like, aesthetics. Right, because um, RAM's RAM at this point, Yes. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're going to be – we'll have a video from them, which will cool. be pretty cool. All right. Yeah. Well, we will see you guys next week. And uh, thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, for those of you who missed it, the archive will be going up sometime tonight. I've got badminton tonight, though, so it'll be probably a little bit on the later side, especially because I have to stitch together two chunks of yeah. show. Because, yeah. uh, because, fuck magic. All right. Peace out. Yep. Bye. You got to do the outro thing. I'm doing it. I got this. All right. Yeah. I can't well, actually, uh, we did not bad this week, considering that um, we only had one and a half hosts, um, yep. and the stream died at the beginning. All oh, right, sponsors: Lynda.com, Pax East, Loot Crate, Lynda.com slash Pax. What? What is that? That's the Lynda.com URL for the Pax sponsorship. Oh, oh, right, that's right. They sponsored PAX, like, at the last second, didn't they? Yep. That's cool. I didn't even have a URL all of today, so I was guessing it, and I was wrong. I did lynda.com slash Linus, and then they were like, nope, lynda.com slash PAX. Oh. So we're going to fix that in post. Luckily, I was like, there might be a corrected one down here every single time that I did it, so we're just going to put the corrected one there. Wow. All right. Yep. All right, later. Bye. Oh, guys, sorry, no after party today. I got to go to badminton.